Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the BSG Automotive channel. You can see I'm nice and sweaty here because it's nice and hot in Chicagoland. Uh, and of course, it's AC season. So we have a 2013 Nissan Altima behind me that has an AC customer. According to the customer, it works sometimes and other times it doesn't. I'm thinking that um, it's just poor operation all the time, but in the cooler temps, like in the morning, it may feel like it actually does something. So today we're gonna to go through a diagnosis on here in real time, and I'll let you guys see how I approach a system like this that I know nothing about. You know, Nissans I'm not used to, I'm used to the Fords, um, just to show you my diagnostic process. So let's go over to the cabin first, and then we'll go to the gauges, because the gauges will tell all, as long as you know how to read them. Let's go check it out. All right, so first things first, I go into the vehicle, and I start the AC system, so I'll get the engine running, Get the AC going. You can see over here it's on. You can see the indicator over there is turning the AC on. Okay, we have it set to 60 and a moderate fan of speed coming out of there. Go over look at our, our vent temp. Yeah, it's not doing much at all. Okay, so the very next thing I do is I go over to make sure uh, that the AC compressor is actually turning on. Let me get a light down in here for you guys. Uh, you can kind of see it way down in there, right down in there, believe me, it's on, clutch is spinning, it's really tight down in there. So the AC compressor is coming on. Now the very next thing I generally look at is the fans. On electric cooling fan vehicles like this one, they should be on low. So again, another quick visual, you can look down in there. They're on. Okay, so we have that cooling fan operation. It's command the AC compressor on, and the compressor is coming on, but the vent temps, well, it's not doing nothing at all. So I decided to hook up a manifold gauge set here, and this right here it tells you everything right away, okay? So in this scenario, we're looking at the pressures on the low side and the high side. Now, first off, the the high side's way too low. It should be, you know, at least 150 on the TXV system. Uh, but on a hot day like this, you know, most of them around 2, 225. A really hot day, maybe 250, okay? You can see the pressures are way too low, okay? Over here, the pressures are way too high. You're not going to get any cooling out of that. And we can see already, we're not pushing much out of the compressor, okay? So we're not looking at a restriction here where it's sucking down the low side and frosting it, and this side's going way high. We're not looking at a no cooling fan issue where both our pressures will be high because there's no cooling fan uh, issues going on, or an overcharge issue here. Uh, we're simply looking at uh, the compressor control valve inside of there. Now this right here can be either the TXV or they have a scroll valve, electronic valve, on the side of the compressor one of those two with these kinds of pressures okay so the very next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna shut the system down okay, let's go ahead and turn the vehicle off where's the button on these things okay so we're gonna turn it off and then we're gonna simply look at the gauges on here everything looks really good with the TXV okay you can see that there's no blockage in the system or in the TXV. The TXV is relaxing. You can see it coming up to 100, and this is slowly dropping to 100. They're equalizing out, okay? Now, I'm not even sure this has a FOT or, or TXV system. I know the Fords use FOT, uh, just about everybody else uses the TXV, and the newer Fords use TXV. Uh, but either way, there's no restriction. We equal out just fine. So just for the heck of it, the very next thing that I'm going to do is bust the machine out and suck down the system to make sure there's no non-condensables, no moisture, none of that kind of stuff in the system causing any issues at all. And of course, make sure there's proper charge level, you know, the right kind of refrigerant, all that good stuff uh, to go back into the system. It's a real quick check that I can do in the shop here and then I can go from there with diagnosis and basically confirm that that valve on the compressor is at fault okay now i'll try to get you a shot of that down below there pull off some of those shields and get in there and show you what it is 
All right, so I have the AC machine hooked up. And again, the reason why I do this is because it's here. I paid for this machine, thousands of dollars. I wanna use it. I wanna make sure the charge that's inside of here is correct and pure. None of those extras in there that you don't want like air and, and moisture. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna recover the system and uh, get it nice and cleaned out, put it in the vacuum for 10, 15 minutes after it recovers and then we'll put some nice pure refrigerant back into there at the proper charge level. And that way we're able to confirm this system does have a pure charge and it's the correct charge. At that point, all the components within the system should work properly, okay? So let's give it a, a minute or two, get this done, and then we can go ahead and check the gauges for operation afterwards. Okay, so I went ahead and I recovered the system with the machine here, and I pulled out uh, 0 0.34 kilograms. Went ahead and checked the spec for this vehicle, and it's right at 0 0.53 kilograms, okay? So we were definitely low, uh, but I don't think that's our whole issue here because if it was low, both of these gauges on here would be low. Low and low. Not normal, but low, okay? So I think we're still gonna have an issue, but it's definitely part of our issue uh, being that much lower than spec on here. So we went, went ahead and used the machine, recovered it, put it into a vacuum, you know, pulled all the moisture out of the system, all the non-condensables, all that good stuff, got it out of there, and then we went ahead and recharged with some pure refrigerant from the machine here to the correct level. So let's go ahead and start it back up and see what kind of pressures we have in our vent temp. So let's go over to the vehicle here. And we'll see what's going on. Get inside of here and start her up. Boom, Nissan. So as you can see right here, we're set at 60, moderate uh, fan speed, and of course the AC is on. So let's go over our gauges and check it out and see what's going on over there. All right, let's see here. Now, of course, our AC compressor has gone back on. Our fans, once again, are coming back on. All those pre-checks are good to go. Let's look at our pressures here. So, again, our, our low side uh, of the system is way too high. Way, way too high. It should be closer to 32, 35 for a TXV system. Um, it's way too high, so you're never going to get any cooling out of that evap coil under the dash there. It's just too close to ambient temperature, okay? Because the pressures do correlate to uh, temperature. You can see the inner ring right here. And then again, the high side here, it's average uh, to low. It depends on what the specs are for the Nissan system. But generally, TXV systems are right around this pressure, uh, 150, 175, 200, whereas the FOT system would be around 225, 250 right now, okay? But the low side is key here. No matter if you have a TXV system or an FOT system, again, I don't know which this system has, and I'm sure I'm assuming it's, it's TXV, it doesn't matter. The low side gauges, the pressure reading will be the same. It's gonna be right around, you know, 30 to 40 PSI, somewhere in that range in there, okay? And that keeps the EVAP coil cool enough to cool down the cabin, uh, but without going too low, where it's going to freeze over and turn into a block of ice, yes it does happen, or too high, like you see here, where it's way too close to ambient temp and you're not going to get any cooling of it. So let's go over to the, the vent temp and see if it improved at all. That's not so bad, it's right around, you know, 50 something in there. Again, it's still not right, you're not going to be able to transfer the amount of heat uh, through that uh, evap coil inside of there to cool down the cabin on hot hot days so this right here tells me that refrigerant control valve in the back side of the AC compressor is at fault and this vehicle does have it okay only problem is it's gonna be really hard to find that valve separately so you may just be putting a whole new compressor inside of here it depends what the customer wants to do um, but yeah this is how it's gonna look when the refrigerant control valve is failing okay now that valve what it does it electronically keeps the low side and high side separate 
and, and it regulates the amount of flow between them, okay? And therefore, the compressor is kind of staying on all the time. Uh, it can reduce drag while you're driving, okay, in the system to, uh, for fuel economy. And it can also re reduce idle sag uh, when the compressor comes on and off, on and off all the time. So there's a lot of reasons they use those valves, but when they fail, uh, you're gonna get pressures just like this. This is textbook uh, pressures right here. So compare it to your system. Of course, make sure you do all your pre-checks on the fans and the refrigerant level and all that good stuff. And if you're still getting these pressures and it equalizes pretty uh, steadily, if you turn it off like this one, both sides, high and low, you know you don't have a TXV issue either, okay? So there it is. A little bit of uh, gauge diagnostics for you and we figure out the problem without ever getting in here and touching anything and getting dirty or hot or anything. Just use their minds and our knowledge and we figure it out. Okay, so of course on this one, when we're changing the entire compressor because like I said, the valves, these refrigerant control valves, they're kind of hard to find, okay? You can find them, uh, but they're kind of hard to find. So um, on this particular model, and on most models that I've come across this on, the electronic refrigerant control valves are right here pointing down. So if the thing, the compressor here is mounted up in the vehicle, it bolts through the block right here, the lines are on top, and towards the bottom, when you look up at it, is their fridge and control valve. Now, in order to replace this, if you can find one, um, you need to recover the refrigerant first because it's just going to blow out of there. You don't want that. So you want to recover the refrigerant first, and then we can start taking it out of there. I'll show you what it looks like. So these ones are electronics. So they have a electrical connector right here. We'll just press this tab right here and release it, and it comes off into the side. And I'm pretty sure 90% of them have a snap ring just like this. Maybe the other ones um, turn lock or they have a bolt that holds them in place, but most will have these little snap rings on here. So we're just gonna grab it and we're gonna bring it in, kind of get it passed and get it out of there. Okay, hopefully you guys saw that. Same as any other snap ring out there. Now getting them out because there is like three or four O-rings to these, usually not a lot of corrosion on the inside or even at the lip here, but getting them out because of all those O-rings can be a pain. So you want to, you know, start kind of moving it around. There's a little lip underneath here. You can kind of pull it out and I pulled mine out already before so that's why it came out so easy. Um, but generally, a lot of times, and again we're replacing the entire valve so it's no big deal. Uh, we can grab it with, with some pliers like this, okay, just like this, and then you're going to use a little bit of twisting action. There is a flat right here, so we can't twist it too far. Twist, 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 and you can pull it out, okay, and there it is. That's the refrigerant control valve, so you can see there's a couple different ports on there on the end, and that's what controls the refrigerant uh, between the high and the low side. On some of the other models, like the Fords and uh, other models, they have a, a, a mechanical one, uh, whereas this one is electronic. And these do fail just as often as the mechanical ones, so you just can't win. And you can see down on the side of there. Now the new ones are gonna come with all the O-rings on them, and usually the, any new O-rings that are inside here, like this one has an O-ring right here, uh, and you just wanna change them all uh, to make sure it's all sealed up going back together. And the same thing, you literally just kind of make sure it's lubricated, slide it in all the way. Okay, like that. There we go. And then we can go ahead and put our snap ring back into place. Same way it came out, same orientation. So we can get these ears in here and just kind of press on a little bit like that and make sure it fits in the groove all the way around like so and then you reconnect till it snaps and that's all there is to changing it the hardest part is going and getting the refrigerant recovered by a shop uh, and then going back uh, to get it refilled so a lot of places they'll they'll change this valve out for like an extra 50 bucks maybe uh, because it is so simple once it's recovered and on the lift already uh, so that's how it looks all right, the new compressor is installed down yonder. System is fully charged. And you can see our pressures are dead on now. So like I said, the high side pressures are usually around 150 or so. 
May 175 on a hot day, a really hot day. Uh, it varies with the manufacturer sometimes. Uh, whereas this one, the low side will always be the same. You want it in that sweet spot, 35 to 45, somewhere in that re region. Uh, you know, this one's around 33 or so on here. And it's gonna keep the cabin nice and cool. So let's go check out the temps inside and see what we're getting out of the vents now compared to before. Let's get inside of here. Excuse the noise. Yep, there it is. So just sitting at an idle with not a lot of airflow across the condenser, we're at 38 or so. So that's nice and cool coming out of the vents here uh, in this car on a nice hot day. So it's a good, good fix. And you can see how that, that little pressure regulator can really jack the system up, even on a fully charged system that otherwise is functioning properly. You know, fan coming on, compressor coming on, all that good stuff. That pressure regulator is what controls your pressures and ultimately your temperature. I'll see you guys next time.